Hello sewing people of the internet. So this video is going to be probably a little bit looser than even my normal videos which aren't particularly scripted anyway. I'm filming this uh, kind of in what is probably the beginning, although hopefully not, of the COVID-19 problem uh, here in the United States. Uh, and I know people in other countries have already been suffering and, and may continue to. So. So for the you know, foreseeable future, we might need to be staying indoors a little bit more. So I thought, well, let me try to get some content out anyway to just add what I can to uh, give those who are interested something to watch. So, uh, and I've, I've been wanting to make this video for a bit anyway, I just haven't gotten around to it. So here we are. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to my latest industrial sewing machine acquisition. Uh, I'll show you the machine, tell you about it, and we'll talk about whether or not this is a machine that you may or may not want to add to your collection or might be a good first industrial sewing machine. So this machine is a Conso 225. It's basically a direct copy of the Singer 111W155, which is uh, one of the more well-known early industrial walking foot sewing machines. It, I probably don't have to say this, but this machine didn't come in this color. Uh, when I bought it, it was black. I've seen them in black and I've seen them in kind of a gray, you know, industrial finish. So this machine is quite beefy. It's a, you know, it's a very sturdy machine uh, that would be good for heavy canvases, some leather. Again, this is not specifically a leather sewing machine, but you could definitely sew uh, some pretty decent, you know, thicknesses of leather with it. Uh, you might want to use pulleys to slow the motor down or put a servo motor on it or some other tricks but uh, you know again for sewing something like wallets uh, you know bags out of reasonably thick leathers it would probably work just fine uh, it does have a very long stitch length which is nice um, and i think you can run threads up to maybe like the the low 200s uh, in it i'm not 100 percent sure about that this is probably a good time for me to remind people like I am not an expert on this or really any sewing machine. Uh, I did a little bit of research on it after I bought it, and I'm speaking purely uh, off the top of my head when I talk about this machine in this video. There's plenty of information on both the Singer 111W155 and the Conso 225 on the internet, so if this machine interests you, I encourage you to dig in and do some reading on it. This machine is a compound feed walking foot machine. So that means you have feed dogs moving the fabric from underneath, the needle pulling the fabric, and the walking foot mechanism pulling the fabric. That's a great representation of it. Unlike the Conso 206, this machine has a top loading bobbin. Now that's kind of nice because it's easier to change the bobbin. It's also easier to take a quick look to see how much bobbin thread you have left. The bobbin on this machine is quite a bit smaller than the M-Class bobbin from my Conso 206 and other machines that use this bobbin. So you will have to change bobbins a little more frequently, especially if you're using a thicker thread. So one kind of interesting thing about this machine is the way you adjust the stitch length. So right now it's set, I think, on the longest stitch length, which I think is about six stitches per inch. So in the bed of the machine, there are two recessed buttons. One is to reset the safety clutch. There's a, uh, a kind of a gear on the bottom on the main shaft uh, that has some teeth that engage with the machine and it's designed so that if the machine jams on something, that will slip uh, and then you can use this button to re-engage it if that happens. Uh, and then this other button here operates the stitch length adjustment. So all you do is press down the button and rotate the hand wheel until it engages and you'll, you'll feel the hand wheel uh, stop and the button will kind of push down a little bit farther. And then you can rotate the hand wheel in this circumstance either towards you or away from you to get the stitch length that you want. And the way you know where you are is through this window there's a dial with numbers on it. So I was set at three stitches per inch and now I've moved to ten stitches per inch let go of the button and rotate the hand wheel 
and now we should be in business. So as you can see, it sews quite nicely. It's a little bit more convoluted setting the stitch length that way. Uh, one thing I kind of like about that is uh, I tend to not be that intentional about my stitch length on projects. I may decide at the last second to lengthen a stitch length or not. Uh, and I think using this machine might make me be a little bit more logical and, and intentional about what stitch length I intend to use. The other thing about this machine that you need to consider, especially if you are looking for your first industrial machine, is that it does not have reverse. That's not necessarily a big problem, and you can definitely work without it. But if you're used to having a machine with reverse, for example, if you're coming from a domestic machine and you've developed the good habit of reversing at the beginning and end of your seams, it may take some getting used to to do the other things you need to do uh, to accomplish that on a machine like this. Uh, and also there are times when you don't really need to do that and we, we probably do it unnecessarily, but I kind of, I would rather do it unnecessarily than not do it when it needs to be done. So now that said, these machines are typically quite a bit less expensive than newer machines that have reverse. I stole this machine. I, I paid $80 for this machine. Uh, it was the machine head and the table frame that it's in. This tabletop is my old tabletop from my other machine and the motor is the motor from my other machine. The motor that was under this machine was actually an old Singer clutch motor uh, that was probably of great quality at one point but it had been sitting in a moist area for about four years I was told. I don't know if I'm gonna try to save it or not. I still have it but it's in pretty bad shape and I'm probably gonna end up scrapping it. I may put a servo motor on this machine. It doesn't appear that I can easily mount a synchronizer or needle positioner to this machine uh, without doing at least a little bit of fabricating. So I may just do a servo motor and not worry about the positioner. I may do the necessary fabrication to make it work. That's way down the road. For now, it's got the clutch motor on it. This machine really is a backup machine for me uh, that I may just occasionally use for fun. Uh, so we'll see how quickly I do any modifications. But anyway, I paid $80 for the machine. Uh, that's an incredible bargain for an industrial machine. Uh, I had to put a lot of work into getting it to look like this, but none of that was necessary. I could have done some, some cleaning and lubricating and it worked when I bought it. So anyway, that's an introduction to my Singer 111, sorry, my Kanto 225. There's plenty of information and other excellent YouTube videos on this style of machine. And if you're interested in it, I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, I think if you are looking for your first industrial machine and you find one of these really cheap like I did, then buy it. Uh, it gives you, you know, a knee lift, which is one of my favorite advantages of an industrial machine. It's definitely tough enough to handle your heavier fabrics uh, and light to medium leathers and things that you probably want an industrial machine for. And it's built like a tank and it'll last probably the rest of your life. There's lots of stuff I'm leaving out of this video because I either forgot or I don't know. So if you know more about these machines that you want to share, post it down in the comment section below. If you have questions, feel free to ask. I probably don't know, but I'll try to find an answer. Uh, and if you're not a subscriber, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. Uh, these are crazy times we're living in, so do your best to stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. When I'm not sewing, I spend a lot of my time either on or in the ocean in South Florida. If you like to see some of the stuff that I like to do, you can always check out my other channel, The Jason Wins. Also, you can follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of other stuff, including more sewing stuff there.